So before we get into today's deck profile, go ahead and take a look at this baby back BS photo from locals today. You gotta enjoy tier zero formats, ladies and gentlemen. So now that you saw that crap, let's dive on into it, shall we? Shout out to our homie Joseph at Locals today for giving us that photo today. It was it was absolute insanity. So hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's your host with the most Avril R32 here and destroy the ever-living boo-boo brown stain off of that subscribe button so that we can climb even further beyond into the 1K ladder. In the meantime, I y'all hitting that like button and the bell and all that other good stuff with subscribing and all that. Goody goody two shoe stuff. Let's talk about a deck that we went three and one today at local. So round one, we ended up losing to Exo Sister, and then round two, we played against like I think it was like a zombie deck or something, and we ended up beating that. And then the round after that, we ended up playing against like something meta, like it was it was off the wall bonkers, and uh, we ended up beating that. And then in the last round, we ended up playing against my dad, who's playing Mystic Mind Burn. And we got the win. So that was that was a good time. Oh, it was Sword Soul. That's what it was. Round two was Sword Soul. We beat that. Round three was a zombie thing. We 2 of that. Then we played against our dad. So we ended up going 3-1. Came in third place out of top four. So this is obviously a runic deck. So sit back, relax, and let's just talk about why this deck is so much fun to play. Like it is... Oh god, it's a trip. Also, this is based on the Arkansas regional build. There are some things I'm missing from this deck. I'd say like 20 to 25% of it I'm actually missing that I don't have for the deck. So keep that in mind as you watch this profile because this deck could be a hell of a lot better. So starting off, we're playing one copy of Diviner the Herald literally only because I have one copy. <laughs> you should be playing three of this. Um, it's so disgusting. We also need to be playing Sprite Elf that we just don't have. Uh, but the fact that you can summon this, dump an Aigido or a Kelbeck, yes, we're playing the Ishizu card, spoiler alert, and to mill five, and then if you, like, make a Sprite Elf, then you can activate it, bring out the Diviner, and then send, like, an Aigido or a Kelbeck to mill five more. It's absolutely insane. We're also playing one copy of Sapphire Pegasus for the Bridge of Salvation. It's it's whatever, honestly. Uh, one copy of Magnamute and one copy of Druidworm. Did you know that Magnamute can grab from the graveyard? Yeah, uh, Pepperidge Farm didn't know that. <laughs> so we end up dropping out Magnamute and then using the effect to get Druidworm back from the graveyard. Freaking love the body steals. Like, they're so fucking good. Uh, and then we're playing just two copies of each. Two Medora, two Kelbeck with two Keldeo, and then two Aigido. Really, this package is fine at two. Sometimes you can brick with it. Um, it really didn't happen too much today. There was a time where I drew three off my Runic Fountain and I hit all, like, mill support. But at the same time, it's like, if anything, the Aikido and the Kelbeck just act as hand traps. So it's it's kind of whatever. So that's it for the monster lineup. Uh, for the spells, we're playing three copies of Flashing Fire because it's really good. Then we're playing three copies of Freezing Curse because I like being able to affect Valor my opponent. And then we're playing three copies of Destruction because back row hate's really good. Uh, three copies of Slumber, just, you know, a good mill three, or just use it to summon a runic. Not much to explain there. And then we're playing three copies of just the tip. Just the big, hard sword tip. <laughs> uh, it's a good card. What, what can I say? Card needs to go to one, honestly. Uh, and then we're playing three copies of the Fountain. This should be a two, but I'm playing three just because the fact I feel like two is a little bit better. Or, excuse me, I feel like three is a little bit better than two. The original build, if you saw the uh, build from Arkansas, did play uh, just two. He was also playing a 43-card main deck. I dropped it down to 40 even, and that's like with cutting two Forge Barrel goods and making the Metaphose Fusion a one-day of peace, um, and then not having two Diviners as well. Uh, and then we're playing one Smiting Storm, one Dispelling, one droplet. God, I love droplet. And then we're playing two copies of Mystic Mine. In the words of Valley D, Avery, every time I play test you, there is always a mine involved. And yeah, you're right. We're keeping that trend alive. Uh, and then we're playing one Foolish Barrel Goods to dump the Bridge of Salvation. Um, we, If you did have like Metal Foes Fusion and stuff like that, then you could play three with two more Diviner. I don't know how I really like Metal Foes Fusion because I actually ended up substituting Metal Foes Fusion for one day of peace. And I actually ended up winning because of it against the like zombie, like just straight zombie Elder Lich player. Um, he had one card left in deck and we drew into a one day of peace off the Runic Fountain draw. So we activated one day and since we both drew and he only had one card left, I won because of it. So I feel like Metal Foes Fusion, even though you do have ways to dump it off of Hugin or to ditch it off of like or even rather send it to Graveyard off Foolish Barrel Goods or to dump with like Aigido or Kelbeck. 
you know, that is a thing, but I just, I love one day because it allows you to just be aggressive with your runic spells. You know, if I activate one day of peace and I start activating a bunch of runic spells, even if I don't have a runic spell for the follow-up on the next turn, when I draw for turn, you know, the game's coming back to my turn because I played one day. So I feel like that this is kind of player preference. Um, if anything, if I've already dumped Bridge of Salvation, then the Forge Barrel Goods just acts as a way for me to dump a runic spell to Grave. Uh, and then we're playing one Terraforming because we're playing five field spells. And then the one Bridge of Salvation that we mentioned along with the one Metaverse for a 40 card main deck. We did Brick with this a couple times in our hand, but it was fine because we could just make a Hugin and then ditch the Salvation anyway. It's also really good too, even if you open up like Sapphire Pegasus, because, you know, if you get this into Grave or like if you have it in Grave with Sapphire in hand, you just get the Sapphire into the Grave by making like a Rank 4 Exceed, like a Mist Dweller or a Dugaris. Then you can use like Medora or Keldeo to shuffle this back or to shuffle back like Sapphire Pegasus and then use the effect to search. It's really, really good in that regard. And then for, let's put these on over here. For the extra deck, we're playing three copies of Hugin. This card's amazing. It's just, it's a level two. You can make Sprite Elf off of it. Um, I was tempted to play a level eight Synchro um, because a level six Herald plus this makes for a level eight and it frees up your extra monster zone. Uh, and then we're playing three copies of Gary. This really should only be two, but we don't have Baroness de Fleur. You should be playing Baroness de Fleur. It's just, you know, too expensive, and I'm not going to pay $100 for a card just to play at locals. Uh, one Munin. It's whatever. It's a good 2,000 defense wall. It never came up. Uh, two Freckies. This should only be one if we had everything we need for the extra deck. Uh, it's really good. Uh, the way that it's worded says if, a ta if an attack is declared involving this card, which means if this card attacks or if your opponent attacks it, they got to banish the top two cards of your deck, and of course it gets you back a runic quick play. And then we're playing one Ints because you can dump it off to Viner to pop a card. It never came up. Uh, one Dweller because it's good. One Dugaris, uh, you don't actually play this, but I mean, we don't have Sprite Elf, so I wanted a way to unbrick my hands since my deck can't work as efficiently as the Runic deck should. And really, this card was an MVP. Being able to summon out like a dead Sapphire Pegasus an overlay into like a Keldeo or a Medora, or even if you just have two of the level four fairies on the field and make Dugaris detach both to draw two and ditch a card. You don't care about losing your draw phase because you're already going to have so much pluses off Fountain anyway. So this was really, really good. Came in clutch. Uh, and then we're playing one Baguska because it's good, one Cowboy for game because I needed a slot filler, and then one of the Changing Synchro because this is the only level 10 I fucking have. And it's really depressing. I need Baroness to flirt so bad. If you have Baroness, you've got to play it in this deck. It's just disgusting. The side deck is pretty much just for locals because I don't have deck debbies and I don't have droplets because... You know, as I've said before on the channel, or at least for all of you who are new subscribers, maybe you don't know, I just buy whatever deck I want to play for, like a regional or a YCS, and then after that event, I turn around and sell it. So I don't really hold on to a lot of cards long term because I don't want to lose value out of my cards. So I kind of just screw around with whatever cores I have lying around, whether it's like Runic or since my dad is Mystic Mind, maybe I'll screw around like Mystic Mind Burn. So the side deck you can make to whatever local, you know, play like whatever your locals is. So we're playing one Pancratops. It's good. Uh, two Lava Golem because I love breaking boards. It's actually really hilarious. These do conflict. I realized that three copies of Heat Wave. It was in from my original Runic build that played Heat Wave. My thinking behind this was one, I need a filler for the two deck nebbies and the droplets and I'm not going to play two Dark Ruler because that seems kind of bad. You could just throw in Dark Rulers and just make it three copies instead of Heat Wave. I get that. But I also figured if I open this going first, I can at least go activate Heat Wave and then chain a Runic quick play to at least still summon a Runic. But it only locks you out of normal summoning or special summoning. You can still set um, so, you know, it's, it's kind of whatever, but you activate this, you can chain a runic quick play spell to still summon the Hugin and get a plus. It's, it's good in theory. Uh, one call by, cause we actually have that one feather duster. Cause we actually have that, uh, three copies of evenly match cause it's broken this format Two TC boo, because it's pretty good. And then the original build from Arkansas was playing one Gravekeeper's trap and one exchange in spirit. I wanted to get this off so fucking bad against exo sisters and it just ended up not happening. It seems kind of gimmicky, like, I, I don't know, like, it almost feels like that these could just be two other cards, but at the same time, like, if you're able to get 15 cards in the opponent's graveyard, and then, like, you hit them with Exchange of Spirit, make them play with a five-card deck, plus you're banishing stuff off the Runics, like, that's pretty much game at that point, so, I don't know, I, there's a lot of different ways that you can build Runic, like, you can go with the Crooked Cook strategy that also made top eight in Arkansas, I don't know what the fuck people are doing up in Arkansas, but a lot of weird rogue stuff topped their regional recently, but, I mean, this deck is fun. It's fun for locals. I mean, the fact that I can kind of basically just half-ass this deck and still do well should speak for itself. Um, but obviously, there are ways to improve it. 
I've already mentioned those here. Um, you know, you do what you wish with it. Change it to your own play style. You know, play less of the Shizu cards. Do whatever it is that you want. Like, that's the fun thing about Runic is that there's just so many different ways to go about it, especially if you're just playing at Locals and you're like me that doesn't have any other regionals coming up, at least until 2023. So, guys, that's my 3-in-1 third place Locals deck. I, my, like I said, I'm just... I had a lot of fun with it. I feel like just trolling this format into oblivion. And if I'm able to do that with Runic, then, well, I guess I'm a Runic main for the rest of the format. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.